In Privacy Watch, schools are reopening across the nation, and as the country remains in a pandemic, some are using artificial intelligence to try to ensure students are brought back safely into class. And now, with some tech companies are actually starting to capitalize on that, a new Vox article takes a look at the software that they are selling to help schools reopen sooner. Rebecca Heilwal is an AI and algorithms reporter for Vox, and she is also the author of the piece. And uh, let us talk a little bit more about this, because when I was reading your piece, Rebecca, I don't know if you're a Black Mirror fan the, of the series, but I kept on thinking to myself, this is so Black Mirror. And there's an actual episode where a mom was able to sort of have nonstop surveillance of her daughter, um, but it just felt like that. So let's talk about some of the software that's being used, because the reason that it felt like that to me is for a lot of these companies were sort of doing this kind of semi-surveillance stuff, and then they just pivoted to meet the needs of these schools. Um, this stuff cannot be cheap, but sort of give me, give me an example of the kind of ways that we're seeing this technology being used in schools now. Yeah, I think part of what you said is really important. These are companies that already existed. They were already selling surveillance tools to both schools and other venues. I think, you know, in repurposing some of their technology for this moment, they've developed tools like mask detection, right? So this is essentially artificial intelligence that screens through a camera image and makes a decision about whether or not a person is wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. Um, so obviously, you know, AI like this already existed, but now it's being adapted for sort of a COVID-19 application. Another one I found interesting, certainly concerning, and definitely brings up some of those black mirror uh, concerns is sort of social distancing measuring AI. So this is essentially a computer program that's measuring the presence of different people in a, in a camera feed and trying to make sure that they're the appropriate distance away from each other. So there, there are other you know applications of AI that are certainly probably popping up, but I think those are two that uh, really stood out to me. Um, and I think what's important to keep in mind is that these are companies that often already have existing relationships with schools or are used to selling these products to schools. So, you know, that should sort of hmm. be on people's radars. Uh, as uh, uh, the mother of a school-aged child, that stood out to me big time over and above the use of it for sort of COVID issues. I was, I thought, wait, what? These companies are already in schools? Um, and I also thought about sort of the privacy concerns. I think one of the other examples was having the ability to screen um, people as they enter the school, kids as they enter the school to determine whether or not they have a temperature. And I always get really concerned when there's any kind of health related data that's being collected. Um, and so you cannot help but to think about security and privacy risks. Um, what are they? Yeah, I mean, I think health data is certainly kind of a new one. Obviously, we were with looking at these surveillance tools in schools beforehand and looking at the risk of facial recognition in schools beforehand. We were concerned about, you know, people's facial data and data about students' identities. Now this is introducing health data into that whole minefield of concerns. So, you know, what happens to data about whether a student has a fever is you know a great question and i think it's worth keeping in mind when we talk about the efficacy of this kind of thing not only do we have to ask whether this technology actually can tell whether someone has a fever we have to remember that not all people who have covid 19 get a fever and not all people who have fevers have covid 19 right so these are incredibly con sort of messy proxies for illness and um, you know, obviously raising privacy concerns as well. Um, another thing we should keep in mind is what happens when COVID-19 ends? There, I don't think there's, you, we shouldn't expect that these tools are going to go away. Companies are constantly going to be looking for new applications of them. And that's, that's really important to keep in mind. Yeah, we had a whole conversation last week about this whole sort of um, leaning into taking people's temperatures as an indication as to whether or not they're sick and if it's even valuable information. Say you just came in from you know, outdoors where it's super hot. Chances are you might be a little elevated. Say you took some medication to bring a fever down. Maybe you are sick, but nobody can tell. So it's one of those things that we don't even know. And then you just brought up something that's really interesting that 
once this sort of these programs, the software, the whatever, have been implemented, they're in these schools, then where can they go from there? How, what are the other ways that they could be used? So I think the primary question is, are we going to keep using this to track other types of health information after, after this pandemic? But, you know, I think the best sort of way to think about this is looking backwards. One of the companies that's selling this was designed in response to the school shooting crisis. So they designed artificial intelligence that mines through cameras looking for signs of weapons, right? And we can ask a lot of questions about whether that AI even works. And now they're already adapting it toward COVID. So I think, you know, that gives you a hint that this is always going to be repurposed to respond to the next sort of crisis and the next sort of concern that the public has. But we have to you know, really ask ourselves, is this actually security? Is this actually safety? Or is it the appearance of safety and security that's you know, violating our privacy? I tell you, Rebecca, how while it's super interesting stuff. It, the Black Mirror people know all about it. If you haven't watched Black Mirror, you should, and you should check out this Fox article as well. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much.